I want to say this. I love my family and my friends. Life is weird. But it's good. <clears throat> so stupid hide. Freaking. Now they're looking for him. Now he has to go hide in a fucking cave or something. I was feeling for the guy because they're saying like, even though he's ugly, <laughs> he's hard to like. He, like Doctor Jekyll, stuck up, stood up for him. You know, he's like, you know, Mister Utterson, make sure he gets his rights. Make sure he's okay. Make sure he's. You know, he's, like, he's not a bad guy, man. If you would know what's wrong with him, if you want to find out what's wrong, but I can see maybe like being so crazy and running over a girl, a little girl, and hurting her, and and like being crazy and keep walking. Keep walking forward and, and running away from that or whatever, and not never stopping. You know, like a hit and run, but I guess I don't think he beat the little girl. But then to get all, but then he he like like beat to death some like very important person, some old man. I'm like, oh my god, Mr. Hyde. But Mr. Hyde has his own spot. He's living in his own spot. He has like his own like maid lady who answers the door and shit. <laughs> like what what is he? What does he have money? <laughs> just a book but I just ate right now so let me get a little bit of water I gotta keep reading because I, I have to I, my daughter's at my house she surprised randomly surprised me yesterday and I miss her and you know just to spend time with her but I told my mom I'm gonna be there at 12 I wanted to finish this book just to get something done you know for some reason something in me doesn't want to read the Romeo and Juliet book I got I don't want to read it. But this is the next book. <laughs> Getting water damaged by this wet jacket of mine. I just don't want to read this, but it's it's, it's, a, it's a play, so it's very short. But I don't know. Some of the writing is probably interesting, but I just don't feel like reading it. I don't know why. Maybe because I know the story already. I feel like you know. Probably why. <clears throat> But I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some dope writing in there. I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm glad I read it. <laughs> Excuse me. This is called um, Incident of the Letter. What letter? The one we just read. There's a letter we read right now. Hey, he dropped the letter. Oh, we'll see. It was late in the afternoon when Mr. Utterson found his way to Dr. Jekyll's door, where he was at once admitted by pool and carried down by the kitchen offices and across the yard, which had once been a garden. To the building which was indifferently known as the laboratory or the dissecting rooms the doctor had bought the house from the heirs of a celebrated surgeon and his own taste being uh, being rather chemical than anatom anatomical anatomical okay his own taste being rather chemical than anatomical had changed the destination of the block at the bottom of the garden. It was the first time that the lawyer had been received in that part of his friend's quarters, and he eyed the dingy, windowless structure with curiosity and gazed around with a distasteful sense of strangeness as he crossed the theater, once crowded with eager students and now lying gaunt and silent. The tables laden with chemical apparatus, the floors strewn with crates and littered with packing straw, and the light falling dimly through the foggy cupola. At the further end, a flight of stairs mounted to a door covered with red baize, B-A-I-Z-E. And through this, Mr. Utterson was at last received into the doctor's cabinet. It was a large room fitted around with, the, with the glass presses, furnished, among other things, with a cheval glass, C-H-E-V-A-L glass, and a business table, and looking out upon the court by three dusty windows barred with iron. The fire burned in the grate. A lamp was set, lighted on the chimney shelf, for even in the house the fog began to lie thickly, and there, close up to the warmth, sat Dr. Jekyll, looking deadly sick. He did not rise to meet his visitor, but held out a cold hand, and bade him welcome in a changed voice. <clears throat> and bade him welcome in a changed voice. And now, said Mr. Utterson, as soon as Poole had left them, you have heard the news. The doctor shuddered. They were crying it in the square, he said. I heard them in my dining room. One word, said the lawyer. Karu was my client, but so are you, and I want to know what I'm doing. And I want to know what I'm doing. You have not been mad enough to hide this fellow? Utterson, I swear to God, cried the doctor. I swear to God, I will never set eyes on him again. I bind my horror to you that I am done with him in this world. 
it is all at an end and indeed he does not want my help you do not know him as i do he is safe he is quite safe mark my words he will never more be, be heard of the lawyer listened gloomily he did not like his friend's feverish manner you seem pretty sure sure of him said he and for your sake i hope you may be right if it came to a trial your, your name might appear <clears throat> i'm quite sure of him replied jekyll i have grounds for certainty that i cannot share with anyone but there is one thing on which you may advise me i have I have received a letter and I am at a loss whether I should show it to the police. I should like to leave it in your hands, Ederson. You will judge wisely, I am sure. I have so great a trust in you. You fear, I suppose, that it might lead to his detection? Asked the lawyer. No, said the other. I cannot say that I care what becomes of Hyde. I am quite done with him. I was thinking of my own character, which this hateful business has rather exposed. Utterson Utter ruminated a while. He was surprised at his friend's selfishness and yet relieved by it. Well, said he at last, let me see the letter. The letter was written in an odd upright hand and signed Edward Hyde and it signified briefly enough that the writer's benefactor, Dr. Jekyll, whom he had so long or whom he had long so unworthily repaid for a thousand generosities, need labor under no alarm for his safety, as he had he had means of escape on which he placed a sure dependence. The lawyer liked this letter well enough and put a better color on the intimacy than he looked or it put a better color on the intimacy than he had looked for and he blamed himself for some of his past suspicions have you the envelope he asked i burned it replied jekyll before i thought what i was about but it bore no postmark the note was handed in shall i keep this and, and sleep on it and sleep upon it asked utterson i wish you to judge for me entirely was the reply i have lost confidence in myself well i shall consider returned the lawyer and now one more one word more it was hyde who did who it was hyde who dictated the terms in your will about that disappearance the doctor seemed seized with a, with a qualm of faintness. He shut his mouth tight and nodded. I knew it, said Utterson. You meant to murder you. You have, you had a fine escape. I have had what is far more to the purpose, returned the doctor solemnly. I have had a lesson. Oh, God, Utterson, what a lesson I have had. And he covered his face for a moment with his hands. On his way out, the lawyer stopped and had a word or two with Poole. By the by, said he, there was a letter handed in today. What was the messenger like? But Poole was positive nothing had come expect, except by post, and only circulars by that, he added. He, on his way out, the lawyer stopped and had a word or two with Poole. By the way, said he, there was a letter handed in today. What was the messenger like? But Poole was positive nothing had come except by post, and only circulars by that, he added. Okay, this news sent off, the visitor with his fears renewed. Plainly the letter had, plainly the letter had come by the laboratory door, possibly. Indeed, it had written, it had been written in the cabinet, and if that were so, it must be differently judged and handled with the more caution. The newsboy, as he went, were crying themselves hoarse along the footways. The newsboys, as he went, were crying themselves hoarse along the footways. Special edition, shocking murder of an MP. That was a funeral oration. That was a funeral oration of one friend and client, and he could not help a certain apprehension lest the good name of another should be sucked down in the eddy of the scandal. It was at least a ticklish decision that he had to make and self-reliant as he was by habit he began to cherish a longing for advice it was not to be had directly but perhaps he thought it might be fished for presently after he sat on one side of his own hearth with mr guest his head clerk upon the other and midway between at a nicely calculated distance from the fire a bottle of a bottle of a particular old wine that had long dwelt unsunned in the foundations of his house <clears throat> the fog still slept on the wing above the drowned city where the lamps glimmered like carbuncles and through the muffle and smother of these falling clouds the procession of the town's life was still rolling in through the great arteries with the sound as of a mighty wind but the room was gay with firelight in the bottle the acids were long ago resolved the imperial dye had softened with time as the colors grow richer in stained windows and the glow of hot autumn afternoons on hillside vineyards was ready to be set free and to disperse the fogs of london insensibly the lawyer melted there was no man from whom he kept fewer secrets than mr guest and he was not always sure that he kept as many as he meant guest had often been on business to the doctors he knew pool he could scarce have failed to hear of Mr. Hyde's familiarity about the house, he might draw conclusions, was it not as well, then, that he should see a letter which put that mystery to rights? And above all, since Guest, being a great student and critic of handwriting, would consider the step natural and obliging, he's asking. The clerk, besides, was a man of counsel. He would scarce read so strange a document without dropping a remark, and by that remark, Mr. Utterson might shape his future course. 
This is a sad business about Sir Danvers, he said. Yes, sir, indeed. It has elicited a great deal of public feeling, returned guest. The man, of course, was mad. I should like to hear your views on that, replied Utterson. I have a document here in his handwriting is between ourselves. For I scarce know what to do about it. It is an ugly business at the best, but there there it is, quite in your way, a murderer's autograph. Guest's eyes brightened, and he sat down at once and studied it with passion. No, sir, he said, not mad, but is it is an odd hand. And by all accounts, a very odd writer, added the lawyer. Just then, the servant entered with a note. Is that from Dr. Jekyll, sir, inquired the clerk. I thought I knew the writing. Anything private, Mr. Utterson? Only, only an invitation to dinner. Why? Do you want to see it? One moment. Thank you, sir. And the clerk laid the two sheets of paper alongside and sedulously compared their contents. Thank you, sir, he said at last, returning both. It's a very interesting autograph. Is that from... <clears throat> And in all accounts, a very old outrider. Blah, blah. Just then, the servant entered with a note. Is that from Dr. Jekyll, sir? Inquired the clerk. I think that has to be from... Um, I thought I knew the handwriting. Anything private, Mr. Utterson? Only an invitation to dinner. Why? Do you want to see it? One moment. I thank you, sir. And the clerk laid the two sheets. The clerk is guest. So the, the, oh yeah, they're at they're at um. Guest is actually at a uh, at Utterson's house, so that's that's Utterson's um. Utterson's servant who came in with a note from Doctor Jekyll to go to dinner. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, sir. And the clerk laid the two sheets of paper alongside and sedulously compared their contents. Sedulously, S E D U l o u s l y compared their contents thank you sir he said at last returning both it's a very interesting autograph that's what guest says there was a pause during which mr utterson struggled with himself why did you compare them guest he inquired suddenly well sir returned the clerk there's a rather singular resemblance the two hands are in many points identical only differently sloped rather quaint said utterson it is as you say rather quaint returned guest i want to speak of this note you know said the master no sir said the clerk i understand but no sooner was Mr. Utterson alone that night than he locked the note into his safe where it reposed from that time forward. I mean, just stood there. What, he thought, Henry Jekyll forged a murderer? And his blood ran cold in his veins. And right, that was the end of that. That was called a incident, incident of the letter. Oh, I see why. All right, peace.